Okay. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening uh, to all the attendees present today. It's a great privilege, privilege for me to once again be here with IIU. And uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Chandni Kinger and I'm working in... Uh, yeah, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Um, it's a great privilege to be here with all of you once again, uh, and especially with the IIU platform. I am Chani Kinger, currently working in UAE with a secondary school in Dubai. And my topic for the day is about the recent, uh, the very important one that is being uh, relevant to all of us in the current scenario that is about chat GBT. And it has been a revolutionary uh, aspect in current scenario. But before I start with my uh, conversation, let me discuss something about IIU. As we all know that uh, International Internship University, that is IIU is a leading virtual uh, education system and the global brand consideration, which is the most valuable, trusted, worldwide and well reputed in delivering the innovative programs. Globally, it is trusted name for the quality training programs and is committed to providing uh, better, word, better uh, virtual education to all the young learners of the globe. In short span of time, IAU has spread its wing in uh, 195 countries and six continents under the strong leadership of its visionary founder, Mr. Piyush Pandit Sir, a committed and inspiring social uh, activist, a passionate educationist from the two, last two decades, providing education to the students from the various social and cultural backgrounds. This is something about the IAU that I wanted to share with you. Uh, I'll just reshare something has gone wrong. Yeah, I'll just uh, get back with my screen. Yeah, I hope it's visible now to all of us. Okay, uh, let's start with. Uh, so today my focus will be on various aspects of the GB, uh, chat GPT and we'll be looking into what do we mean by that, why it is so special when it comes to uh, and why such a huge discussions are happening, why certain countries has decided to ban or uh, restrict the usage of the chat GPT in the, in the countries. And there is one video that I also would like to share with you all. And uh, there are a few ways that as a teachers, how we can inculcate the usage of chat GPT in a positive way, rather than just making the students to work in a scenario that, uh, that they misuse or they just try to replace the uh, teachers with the usage of chat GPT. So that's something where we will be looking into and getting into the deeper. So let's all have a good understanding on all of that. Uh, do you we really think, I want to know from the audience, do we really think that uh, chat GPT is going to be a revolutionary change that is going to change everything in the classroom or is going to replace the teachers in the classroom or it's going to be a, a, a fundamentally a challenge for the teachers to be in the classroom or, or the existence of the teachers in the classroom. So I would be expecting the responses from you all in the chat. So definitely let me know what are your opinions as we it, this is a, a recent trend that has emerged and it is creating a, a huge impact on the young learners, especially the ones who are writing their assignments, the ones who are getting into the studies in one or the other way. and. Uh, Many people have tried to use this in a different ways also. So definitely that is going to be the aspect that we'll be looking into. So let, let's know what is happening and how the things are happening there. Uh, so first thing first, what is meant by chat GPT and how did it came to its existence? How uh, the chat GPT is being creating an impact with uh, the students or among the others in the, in the industry or in the society? Uh, and, and as as chat GPT is a, a chat boot that we can say, which has been an AI powered, which is creating or which has been developed by open AI. And uh, this is based on a language model that has been created, a pre-trained transformer, which is creating a language uh, model or which is based on the language model. And it has a lots of possibilities and visibilities to share the, uh, share the answers of any questions that we write with. So there was a scenario when I was just looking into for the topic that uh, there were lots of uh, 
uh, comments that were coming up there that uh, it might be the replacement to the Google also that chat GPT has answer for everything as the Google used to have it. So there is another controversial, controversial aspects that has been looking into that uh, is the chat GPT creating a competition for the Google or is it going to be the replacement of the Google? So what's the thing coming up? Let me know from your side also if you have came across something and uh, let's the chat be continued. And uh, chat GPT, if you think about it is again, um, a deep learning thinking that we can say because it has been trained in such a way that it can answer any questions and i was just looking into uh, the cnbc videos also that was being shown that how the impact of chat gpt has been created there were certain questions that has been asked uh, about uh, the world economy or about the uh, world that uh, for example there was one question that i came across was uh, who is responsible for the COVID-19? So it has given a very diplomatic answer that still the investigations are going on. Still, uh, the, there has been just a, a base that was being found in China, but no further evidences are found. And this actually has created an impact for the people also that the, we cannot totally rely on chat GPT to a greater extent because the responses that is going, going to give, it may be correct, it might be it might not be correct some of the times and it might not be that reliable some of the time. So we have to be very careful when we are using a chat GPT and especially we have to train our students that if in case they are using it, they have to be very mindful of what the content it is being answering there. So we cannot just copy paste or we cannot just take everything what I mean, we cannot accept what exactly the chat GPT gives us. And we all know that it has came from, uh, it has been, um, uh, we can say um, be launched by OpenAI and currently the version that they are using is 0.3. So I mean 3.0, yes. So that's something the chat uh, GPT-3 is being pronounced to this day. So that's one of the aspects that uh, that has to be looked into. Now, uh, when I was just looking into this, I, I was just coming across with the uh, news and uh, the, the research papers and the research articles that has been created. Uh, created and then I came across that why it is so special that everybody is after chat GPT and the and the revenue that they are generating the number of uh, people that are talking about so I came across this graph and as you can see over here how the graph in last three four months three months mainly how this graph has gone from December 22 till today that is 20 Feb 23, how this graph is being changing. So this graph is talking about the mainly the daily worldwide visits to open AI's uh, website and the chat GPT platform. So it's somewhere where we can see that how many people are visiting as comparatively against if you think for the Google also, we can very precisely see that, uh, that how the open AI and the chat GPT has become a, a topic of search or a topic of trend these days. And that's where something we look into. Uh, yes. So this is something which blowed up my mind that why everybody is talking about. And in this three months, how the open AI has generated this many uh, people to visit their sites and all. Uh, furthermore, there are lots of different opinions. I could find some of them from the Education Week as I was just going to research on the on my topic or I was just trying to get some aspects that what others also think, not only me as an educator, but what others also think when we, when we say that uh, we want to inculcate uh, the chat GPT into the education, we want to bring the chat GPT uh, or is it going to be the replacement of Google? So when these questions were popping up in my mind also, I came across certain opinions that were being given uh, by the different people, by the by the different teachers and all and over a period of time it gave me an idea that okay something or the other where uh, we think that the teachers are happy to have the chat gp to some extent or there are certain aspects of of the same i, I mean we can see that two sides of the same coins and similarly there are teachers or the educators or the or, or the people in the education field who are not in really in favor of the chat gpt because it's it's uh, it is something that can create a risk for the uh, teachers it can create somewhere uh, we can stay in the aspects uh, that might affect the teachers so that's somewhere where we can see that yes definitely this is going to be a scenario that we'll be looking into 
now uh, yeah i'll just change this okay this was something i would just did, like to even give the credit to the ditch that textbook uh, website where i got this uh, thing uh, that talks about that it's the time to rethink between the plagiarism and the cheating now when we say a book created and a student created content as you can see over here that uh, the cheating is being given some aspects while if we think from the plagiarism point of view it is something different right so when we have to think for both the scenarios what stands and where does it stands and which is the high quality of the content that we can think about i will take a bit of time to make you understand this because this is something where as an educator i was just uh blowing up my thoughts that okay what is the difference that we are trying to create? We talk to the students, avoid a plagiarism. We talk to the students, give your own content. But now with the introduction of Chair GPT, how can we claim with the students that this, whether this is the student created content or it's a boot created content? So let's understand this slide and in detail to find out the gap, to find out the understanding of what is happening actually in the world and, in the, and what is happening in the in the countries all over the globe. So I have certain questions uh, on my left hand side, as we can see here, which of this would you consider a cheating? Which of this is relevant to your students future? And which of this would you see, would you use in your work as an adult? So now here the question is to both, not only to the students, but to both, that is the teachers who are, who, who can use this, uh, in a positive way or in a, in a in a favorable consideration. And there are students who can also use the chat GPT in a positive or a considerable way. So now the question comes up is, will the teachers be also considered as a cheaters or by saying that it's a cheating to get the details or get the information ready-made available? Or we, will, we are talking about that we are avoiding plagiarism or we are avoiding the cheating just we are getting the support from the boot created content so that's somewhere the gap or a thin line of difference is to be found out and there is one big question that i, I was just thinking about that is showing up here that is which of this is relevant to our students futures so as an educator when i think that when i'm giving my students some research work or when i'm asking my students with some assignments if they're using chat gpt everything is being done there then I don't think there is some future that I see that my students should be using ChatGPT to a greater extent. So this is my personal opinion. Definitely, it may vary from educator to educator. It may vary from uh, the each persons. And definitely, I'm not any against with ChatGPT because it is giving a really great solutions also. And we know that when we think about a good created content, or if we think about a student created content, I think the students still have that creativity because I teach the adult students that uh, ranges from year 10 to year 13. So we know that how the students have their mind, even if they are not having, if even if till now they were not having chat GPT, they were showing up their creativity. They were showing up the content that they have. They are already a knowledgeable or the contentful people or the humans of the society. So definitely this cannot become the replacement of their creativity, their innovations, their thought process or their thinking. So we, we have to, again, as an adult to guide them that whether or when to use the chat GPT or the platforms like this, because uh, I, I'll tell you honestly that uh, when I was just looking into all these things, I, I just was trying to find out that, okay, Forget about the Google, forget about Jet GPT. What's the, what is the next alternative? Because I've seen uh, and during my research that there are a few countries who has already been Jet GPT. There were a few countries who had already been the TikTok, right? So in the same way, this also has been banned by some of the countries. So why the countries have started to ban? And what is an alternative that people have found out, right? Because we know we are humans and we have a choice or we have the talent to find out a loophole before the, the things get invented or uh, or um, being brought into the market, right? So I was just looking into that, that what is an alternative to chat GPT that the people have started to use or that can be used by. So there were lots of platforms coming up there. But as we know that the thing can be uh, considered as 
fastest, smarter, or the creative than the humans because the people who created Jet, Jet GPT are also again the humans, right? So that's somewhere that we look into that okay, uh, everything is being being created or everything that has been being coming up is the ultimate outcome of the human's mind, right? So we cannot say that boot can create it something better than the humans, right? And that's where somewhere I was just looking into the other aspects also. Uh, now, I, yeah, now there is one video that I would like to show which talks about certain ways uh, through which uh, we can, that is our teachers can use uh, the chat GPT to some extent and uh, Mm, I'll just reshare my screen because I think I have to share the sound as well, right? Yes. Five ways to use chat GPT in the classroom. Hi, everyone. In today's video, we're discussing the top five ways teachers can use ChatGPT in the classroom. ChatGPT is a powerful tool that can help students learn, engage and have fun in a virtual setting. Whether you're teaching remotely or in a classroom, ChatGPT is a must-have tool for teachers. So, without further ado, let's get started. 1. Automated Q&A The first way teachers can use ChatGPT in the classroom is by using it as an automated question and answer system. Teachers can ask students questions on various topics, and ChatGPT can quickly respond with accurate and relevant information. For example, if a student asks, what is photosynthesis? ChatGPT can respond with a concise and clear definition and explanation. This way, teachers can save time and engage students more effectively. 2. Enhancing learning experiences. The second way teachers can use ChatGPT in the classroom is by enhancing the learning experience. Teachers can use ChatGPT to provide personalized feedback, recommendations, and summaries of students' work. For example, if a student submits an essay on the importance of water conservation, ChatGPT can provide a brief summary of the essay, highlighting the key points and providing constructive feedback. Additionally, ChatGPT can help students understand complex topics in a fun and interactive way. For example, by creating a quiz on the solar system and having ChatGPT provide answers and explanations to students' questions. 3. Improving student engagement. The third way teachers can use ChatGPT in the classroom is by improving student engagement. ChatGPT can help teachers create fun and interactive games, quizzes, and simulations that students will love. For example, teachers can create a simulation where students can act as scientists. They can use ChatGPT to help them make decisions and solve problems related to a specific topic, such as climate change. This way, teachers can keep students motivated and engaged, even in a virtual setting. 4. Personalized tutoring. The fourth way teachers can use ChatGPT in the classroom is by providing personalized tutoring. ChatGPT can help students practice their skills and knowledge in a fun and engaging way. For example, ChatGPT can provide students with a list of math problems. And as they solve each one, ChatGPT can provide instant feedback and explanations. It can also provide students with personalized recommendations and tips on how to improve their skills. 5. Automated Feedback The final way teachers can use ChatGPT in the classroom is by providing automated feedback. Teachers can use ChatGPT to provide students with instant feedback on their writing, speaking, and other skills. For example, teachers can have students submit a speech on a specific topic. And ChatGPT can provide feedback on the student's pronunciation, tone, and other aspects of their speech. This way, teachers can save time and help students improve their skills more effectively. That's it for today's video. We hope you enjoyed our top 5 ways teachers can use ChatGPT in the classroom. Whether you're teaching remotely or in a classroom, ChatGPT is a must-have tool for teachers. So, go ahead and give it a try and let us know how it works for you in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. 5 Ways to Use ChatGPT 5 Ways to Use ChatGPT
Okay, uh, I think we, we all got a bit of idea that how the teachers can use the chat GPT and uh, this are some of the other things that I would again like to give the credit to ditch that textbook uh, uh, people uh, who has shared this uh, small uh, graphics and, and I really which liked it a lot because it gave me the, a more insight set what exactly can be uh, done or how we as a class teachers, I mean, as a, as a classroom teachers, how we can use the chat GPT and how we can make it a really important for our learners that if we as a teachers are using it very effectively, definitely we, we expect our learners also to use it very effectively if we are actually giving them a room, if we are give, actually giving them a scenario where they can uh, avail the facility of using the chat GPT, right? So there are certain ways that you can see are being listed here that actually allows us to look into that how the chat GPT can help uh, be useful to all of us, right? And uh, I'll, I'll just be taking it forward. Uh, there's a few further more explanations or further more points that I, I could collect that that can be useful to all of us that as a teachers where we can use it uh one of the thing that i was just looking into that if we are making the lesson plans right this is a need for the hour that if we are making the lesson plans definitely we can use uh chat gpt uh furthermore uh, when we say uh that to explain certain difficult topics or the contents at that scenario we can again use the chat gpt and uh, Yes, looking into the fact that uh, to generate certain past practice questions, again, the teachers can use the chat GPT. Furthermore, uh, to summarize the text or the articles. Now, when we have the young learners to whom we actually have to provide those kind of scenarios or we have to provide them um, the aspects of uh, the smaller content because see many of the time when i teach some of the subjects i also face the struggle that i have to give them the summary rather than elaborating or explaining those content in detail so actually we have to create it in that way that how we can make it a precise content in that way again we can have an idea that yes we can put this content in such a way that students understand it but in a lesser period of time even i could recollect that some of the textbooks were uh were i mean uh, some of the chapters or the units were there which i could make it a summarized format and provide it to my my learners which helped me also to make it a bit quicker which helped me also to provide them a good understanding and furthermore they also got the idea or the crux of exactly what the content is being taught about furthermore the chat gpt can be used by the educators for creative writing prompts and uh, this was something that i really liked about because my subjects are very theoretical and in this theoretical subjects the problem that i faced was uh, that students are not ready to or maybe sometimes they even though having the knowledge, they are not able to put it in a paper. It's like something you have in your mind, but you are not able to write it in your paper, right? And that's somewhere which helped helped me also to some extent that I can create certain writing prompts and provide it to my learners so that it's not very difficult for them. And it's not really something where we can say that uh, it's, uh, it's very easy for us to get the responses from our learners. And sometimes we as a teachers, we can ask to provide them with certain questions that can be explained. And as a teachers, many of the time, the reading comprehension can also be given. We can create certain interactive quizzes and the games. We all know that even when uh, there was no existence of chat GPT, but we used to use the quizzes. We used to use uh, uh, the Classcraft, uh, Kahoot, and all those platforms. But ultimately, with the innovations or with the creations of the chat GPT, the, the other platforms are being also created. And there are certain other things that I was just looking into that other than making the lesson plans, how are the other scenarios where the teachers can also uh, reflect on and can provide certain information uh, the first thing that I came across again was about uh, providing a feedback. And I think somebody has already mentioned in the chat also that yes, providing the feedback is one of the things that we can look into when we talk about the chat GPT. Furthermore, as a teachers, as I, I said earlier that uh, many of the times, you know, uh, when I have to create some content, when I have to create some uh, 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 activity mainly as a, as a teacher, it gives me, I mean, it, it takes me a bit of 
time to think about that okay what can i i give some activities but when we put on the chat gpt it gives a very prompt answers or we can say it allows us to generate certain ideas that it can blow up our mind and can support us in, in making it assured that by take, by connecting like for example i was just teaching a globalization this week and and i realized to okay, there should be certain activities or certain uh, fundamentals which I can connect with the globalization. So we connected it with the MNCs, we connected it with the uh, uh, SDGs. So this is how we, we got certain ideas generated over there that, okay, we can connect, we can brainstorm together for the writing process and it will place all the ideas, all the thinkings into one place. So that's where somewhere I can say that ChatGTP GPT again supports the teachers in generating the ideas or creating new topics that, that are not being discussed yet. Uh, furthermore, if you want to actually ref refute the ideas and uh, use those new refutable ideas, rebutable ideas in a way that we can strengthen uh, the content that our learners are coming up with or the answers that they are coming up with, then we can ensure that we create the questions which are very debatable or which are which are very which can be very easily discussed. So let's not make our learners to be very passive. Instead, by converting those things, even uh, I I many of the time use the gallery walk as as one of the activity. And then furthermore, I make it a, a group activities where the students are visiting from station to station. That is a learning center, that's what, that's what we call. So that's where some, we, some activities also that supports us to create, to be created when we are using the chat GPT. Uh, many of the time it happened for me that uh, I had to provide a sample answers to my students. So some of the places I felt that chat GPT can be a good answer to answer my students' questions. So somewhere they're creating the writing samples uh, either for sample answers or maybe some revision notes or maybe some some brief about certain aspects or maybe certain topics or the subjects that again can be done and in in chat gpt the responses are being given by the experimenting with the elements so somewhere it is being done that okay the the it has been I can say the AI has been treated or trained in such a way that it can provide us by, I mean, the information by adding the claims or evidences or maybe the analysis or maybe by reorganizing the whole structure. So somewhere or the other, we can understand that how the th things are going on. Then we can use again as a teachers, we can use as, a, as I said, we can use for writing it prompts. And furthermore, that I could make it out that there are endless possibilities through which we can use the chat GPT. And uh, there are certain schools. I was just reading into the news some time back that there are certain schools, there are certain areas where, uh, or the countries where the chat GPT has been banned, or even the intranet, I can say, that has been restricted with the use of chat GPT. Right, so there are certain aspects that again it it can be looked into that why um, the chat GPT is being uh, becoming an a scenario where we have to think about that whether it's a uh, use for us or it's going to be a scenario where uh, it is going to be a challenge for the teachers. Right, so I'll just share one more video that I was just looking into. If possible, let me try to share the same again. Okay, uh, I am not sure whether it will be coming up over here or not, yes. But let me just try to give the brief idea what exactly the video again talks about, that it helps. And uh, see, uh, Chet GPT somewhere discusses the moral implication of the technology, right? So as a teachers, we can again, and I have the I have one of the projects going on with my uh, students where, we, uh, where we're working on the SDGs, where we are trying to connect them with the globe, uh, including the globalization aspect, climate change aspects, and all those things. So we were working in certain aspects of, of connecting those students with the chat GPT and uh, like with the technology mainly. And it actually created a scenario where the students were themselves coming up that how the chat GPT can become a future for the business education or the future for the schools or maybe for the students. Right, so certain aspects were also being discussed in my uh, among my students that how this or that can only be discussed or this or that can can be covered up over here. 
right? And see, uh, one of the framework for explain for exploding the chat GPT was somewhere I could see that uh, the children, the families who are involved in in the in the first place, because the, the this open AI has created the platform for the teachers and for others also that how the researchers, the practitioners, the partners, the research scholars, how they are coming up with their scenarios with the chat GPT. And this has the algorithms that can simplify and otherwise, uh, I can say, accumulate some practices or the processes of exploring a seamlessly or seemingly the infinite number of possible boundaries. So as I say, that the teachers can make, make, make it sure, as I'll go back to my previous slide, which was talking about many aspects, that how the teachers can use it. So some of them, in case if I have missed it, I can just take it forward again that uh, we can use it to provide the students an access with a good or lot of information and see students are already contentful, right? Sometimes I've seen some of my students, they, they teach or they explain the concept more better than what I was about to say or when I was about to talk about, right? So somewhere or the other, it helps that, okay, when we are not only thinking about chat GPT, but also the students are already contentful. And there is one more important thing that I, I came across here was that use it to remix the students' work. So sometimes I feel that, okay, this is something where we can see that the students can think about and the students can... Uh, can create their content not just only the book based but they can think and put the technology along with the chat gpt into the as assignments of the aspects and can proceed further and there was one more thing that i was just looking into over here that it can be a debate uh debate the boot because uh, i had one of the assembly happening in my school recent days and we have seen that how they integrated the robot uh panelists along with the, the students among the panel, I mean, uh, further students also were in the panelists. So it was literally the debate or the panel discussion that was organized by the students or by the, with the support of the teachers and how beautifully they integrated the chat GPT or uh, the technology in this assembly. So that was really wonderful to see this. And this is one of the other ways the teachers can, uh, this, the teachers can think of using the chat GPT or uh, the technology into the classrooms or maybe in the, in the, in the functions like that. Many of the time, even the teachers can use to solve the difficult problems. We teachers are human. So many of the questions which the students ask, we are unaware of that and we might not have the answers to all of them. And that's the reason sometimes we fa face the problem that uh, we have to think, we have to rethink, and then we have to get back to our students, right? So in this case also, as a teachers, we can take a useful support or a positive support from the GPT. Furthermore, writing the lesson plans, as I mentioned, is one of the things uh we can anticipate the response that you would expect from them or we can anticipate the responses that that can be that can be raised into the classroom so that's one of the aspects that can be looked into and uh, and the most important thing that i liked about us uh we can create the assignment rubrics we can create an uh, a pre a pre uh planned feedback to our students' work. It can be more useful to provide the complex information into the, into the simpler format. And furthermore, we can ensure as a teachers to take the several responses and make the better product. So many of the time when we, uh, when we have to provide uh, simple answers or many of the time we have to provide a simple um, analysis or the summary, we can just take the use of chat GPT again. Uh, one most important thing that I liked about ChatGPT was that as a teacher, if I have to create, okay, I'm creating a lesson plan, but that is for the whole class. What about the personalization? What about my students of the low achievements? So in that case is many of the time we struggle that what activities or what things can be given or what resources can be provided to the learners so that they can, uh, they can that especially the low achievers, they can come up with the solutions or the answers. So in those cases, I was just wondering that how we can, or how I can ensure uh, those uh, differentiation to be made possible. So for that, I think uh, we are, uh, somewhat given a privilege to use the chat GPT to make the personalized plans. Uh, many of the time providing tutoring or the coaching, again, this can be done for, for the students 
uh, especially when when we teachers have to take the advantage then definitely we can provide the tutoring or the coaching services also i mean co coaching uh, support also then generate the prompts and the questions to facilitate the discussions it may be in terms of debates it may be in terms of panel discussions it may be in terms of uh, starter activities or maybe at the end of the lesson the plenary activities so all of this can again be inculcated there and uh, furthermore if if you think for then provide information and answer the questions as a basic or the primary functions that the JHGPT is doing. And the teachers can also apply the same in the classrooms or can provide the same facilities to the students in the classroom. Supplement in-person instruction. Now, this was something that I put a full stop and I was just thinking about it because, you know, uh, if we say that it will supplement the in-person uh, instruction, that it has to supplement, but it, it should not be a replacement. So that's somewhere the teachers have to be very careful, be mindful when you're sharing some resources, when you're talking about certain aspects uh, with the others, then also you have to ensure, especially these young learners, they are already tech savvy. They are much far ahead than us. And that's the reason we have to be very mindful when we are providing them any resources or any other information. Right, so always uh, we need to ensure from our side that how we optimize the use and avoid the distractions and all. And I have seen that many of the schools like switching can be disruptive because disruptive for the students in the scenario. And many of the schools even face the problem that uh, the school level integration segregation can persist at all the small levels or all the small scales like classrooms or maybe cafeterias or due to the circular tracking and a lack of culturally responsive teaching practices sometimes affects what the instructions have been given by the teachers to the learners so that's the other thing that can be looked into and furthermore if you think of applications must be couched uh, in an appropriate manner because the infrastructure or or we can say the school assignments, the policies, the, the expectations, the school rubrics, that is assignment rubrics. And even if there is, a, there is a debate or a peer assessment. So all this rubrics that we create or the samples that we create, everything that the school changes in the selection of uh, their behaviors or among the responses that they're expecting from the students, everything has its own impact so we have to be very mindful as a teachers also again that how we can inculcate that this changes or how we can bring this changes to the to or we can put this changes to uh, in front of the students right and uh, i was just talking about a band that, uh, in the schools that was uh, somewhere that artificial intelligence or the ai that was being banned uh, and this ban was created or this ban was applied because of the concerns of cheating mainly. And some of the experts believe that schools should instead try using the software to their advantage rather than making it as a platform for uh, avoiding the plagiarism or creating a cheating environment, right? So that's somewhere uh, that we think about or we should think about that how beautifully we can present uh, the chat GBT and especially when I was looking into the three countries that came up at, at, at the very first pace was US, France, and India, right? So these are the, these are the three countries which has totally banned or restricted the use of. And, you know, this proposal came from the teachers. So that was something that uh, the teachers were the one who has asked that to look out for the indications that the students are using the tools at the home, and then they are coming up with their um, with their answers and assignments done and projects submitted on time and all. But ultimately, there is no indication that, that AI detection technology, because as such tool being created uh, by OpenAI, it will be uh, in use in the schools very soon. That's also has been claimed. So otherwise, other than that, Again, as we know that the teachers have to be very mindful of all these kind of things. And we have to ensure that how things can be done or how the things can be brought forward when we talk about the jet GPT. And uh, I was just looking into one of the thing, uh, if uh, using the chat GPT is really very, uh, very easy because it doesn't ask for much of the downloads or any other thing. So that's somewhere that it is, 
uh, the theories or it is somewhere the technology that is being very easily created. And there was one research work that I came on, on, um, in, in, in my reading, which was, I think, somewhere in the financial review, which talks about that one of the principles of the school say that schools should not be fear uh, about the chat GPT because it can foster, it can actually foster the creative thinking, right? So somewhere or the other, we can accept this as a teachers that not all our students are engaged in misusing the technology, but it can actually think of that how it can be important for our students also to come up with the creativity or how this can be uh, done with the help of, uh, I mean, with the help of chat GPT. So as a teachers also, we, we should not be taking this as a negative aspect that, okay, if, if this is coming, the role of the teachers is gone. If this is happening, then the teachers are going to lose their jobs. No, this is not the scenario. Without the humans, the, the th things are not going to be at the place. That is the teachers are the one which is a guiding source for the learning. Right, so somewhere or the other, the teachers have to be very precisely thinking about or taking it positively that how the chat GPT um, is being created and how it it is being framed with regard to the scenarios that we see over here. Uh, and chat GPT is actually a game changer, as we have seen looking at the. Uh, and looking at how the how it can be used by the teachers, how it can be used by the students. And I would just say some teachers might even struggle to prevent an inappropriate use of the tool. That is also but obvious because as a teacher, if I have 30 students in my class or 25 students in my class, I cannot have an access to visit all the students to know what they are doing. So some way or the other, it is possible or it is challenging task for the teachers also that it is uh, not possible for us to prevent the inappropriate use of this tool. Uh, for example, if it is in assignment or the assessments that is being taken, taking place, if it is an online, definitely assignments are given at home, projects are given at home, the assessments are given at home, definitely we don't have any a way to prevent this inappropriate use of chat GPT as a teachers. Furthermore, each the response is original and therefore it is not being flagged by, as a plagiarism or is not being detected as a plagiarism. So that's the another challenge as the teachers we might face there, right? Furthermore, it is important for us to build the awareness and the skills. See, if you restrict the students, the possibilities are the students will misuse it. But if you teach them, if you give them those skills, if you transfer those skills that, okay, we can use the chat GPT for so and so favorable situations or favorable conditions, then this building and awareness can actually help to identify biased or inaccurate information that will be shared by our students or being used in their assignments or in their uh, projects. Furthermore, uh, it is possible for the schools in the districts to know actually that how the things can be taken or prevented for, then it is responsibility for the schools or if you are working in the districts, then it's responsibility for districts that they will need to determine that uh, whether to allow or block chat GPT from the network, because as, as if I think about, uh, we have certain schools in UAE who has that uh, arrangements where they restrict some of the uh, sites, especially the social media, right? So it, it is uh, common for all of us. So there are certain areas in which they can think of that chat GPT should be blocked in the, from the network. And furthermore, it can be understood that it is still accessible with the personal devices or maybe personal networks. So even if they, if the students are using the Wi-Fi, it is possible that it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't allow the chat GPT to be accessed. But yes, when the students are at home and they're using the personal uh, data or personal Wi-Fi, they can still have an access to chat GPT. So again, the teachers are being um, hold back in the scenario to restrict the usage of the students. Furthermore, the last challenge that I was going to talk about is that support and training should be provided to the teachers also. So this is applicable to the school leaders or the professors or maybe the uh, educational authorities who should think about that to provide the training to the teachers so that it the teachers can think about the solutions to overcome these challenges and find out the ways to use the chat GPT in the positive ways. So if you, are, if you are thinking that, okay, it can be done by the teachers, no, it is not always possible. 
because as i said my school used to restrict the social media so it is not in the hands of the teachers to do so it is somewhere where the leadership rules has to exist and the leaders have to come forward to take the initiative to uh, ensure that this is being i mean the the network is being uh, restricted or the net network support do not support the usage of chat gpt and many of the time it happens that when we start thinking all about this amazing ways uh, to use this revol revolutionary tool in the classroom then the thing is uh, the teachers are always in the discussions and there are certain aspects where we can say that uh, some opinions that came up uh, that it was it is a replacement of google or wikipedia or the alternative to google or wikipedia so again this is something a uh, thought provoking or i leave it on you people as an audience that you think about or you come up with your solutions that actually is it an alternative to google or wikipedia so this is a food for thought from my end before i end up my session and and we we know that as a teacher how we can or what makes the chat gpt a game changer and how it is being um, being considered as an alternative when you will research across if you have any thoughts you can start putting in the chat as well so that will even help me to uh, get uh, ideas for, for the same uh, from my side as well right and this another thing that i can say that there's no artificial intelligence who can destroy or who can who can affect the position or the role of a teachers in the classroom however the technology develops it cannot replace the teachers so definitely with or without the help of the chat gpt the teachers will still be needed but the question is that will it be the replacement of google or wikipedia so that's where i end up my today's session and definitely i hope you all have enjoyed today's session and uh, uh, if in case if any further queries regarding the chat GPT, how to use it and what are the scenarios that we can use into. So we can just have a look at that as well. And uh, that's all from my side for today's session and hope to see you all again. And uh, yes, I could see lots of comments coming up here in the chat box. I'll just get, get back to all of you once we are done with this. So thank you so much to all of you. And I hope this has helped you a lot today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.